you find value in our free sharing of knowledge and experience and want to support us? Gain access to our extended length ad-free videos as well as our in-depth producer's notes that turn every video into an in-depth fly fishing class. Join our Patreon group today. So guys, we've just come out here after about four inches of rain and the big river is jumping into our little creek and you can see that right through there. <laughs> and that's what we're facing today. The spring creek is backed up and the main river, a little braid of it has come out over here. We're gonna go through this section about three hours too early and that's our pl uh, pl plot, <laughs> our plight, a plight in life to try to see into this stuff or see a fish. Don't wanna just fish, we wanna just try to hunt and find the fish we're after. So a lot of people ask, how the heck do we find the big fish? Well, every stream has a big fish. You just have to find what big is. Um, but you can tell how fast I'm going. This is me at full speed on this creek. And if you're going faster than that, you're not going to find a big brown. Oh, rise up on the shoreline there? Yeah. Yeah, has to be a brownie. Now, which one was that? These fish, no doubt, have moved around a lot. But the point is, look at how slowly I'm moving. And realize, you cannot impose yourself into an environment and remain undetected. So every fish in our videos generally represents at least a half hour, if not a full hour of effort, if not more. But a half hour minimum, sometimes an hour and a half. And this is why. I'm just looking, looking in between the sunbeams, just looking for the shapes in between the sunbeams. And man, is that not easy. Whew. So right now I'm just looking for something moving or dead still. An out of place, dark torpedo shape. Or a moving torpedo or a still torpedo. <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to find see anybody on that far side, hey? Yeah. See, right now I've got a perfect look at that sun beam right there and I'm just waiting for somebody to cruise along it. But now I'm gonna get over here, I'm gonna go down this little dip and slowly get onto that bench there. And that's where I'll probably stand for about five or 10 minutes waiting for somebody to show, because they will. Yeah, he's coming down across there. So, so he's active. So yeah, not sure if you want to get on the fish. He should, he should be gettable, onable. You know, if you can see him. It's a gorgeously big fish, eh? Okay. Okay. I think he just took a nip. I'm going to try to do this left of him. Oh, he just fed. You Are you on him? Yeah. Okay. He just ate something and here. That's me. That's me. Okay. He just ate something and here. Had you. That's me. Yeah. That's me. No. That's trouble though. He's in those sticks. Come on, fish. Awesome. That's a nice male. Stunner of a fish. Beauty. That was stunning. He came up, refused it, swirled, came back on it, ate my nymph. Big male. Whew. Come on. Yeah, that looks not up. He wants to go home. Yeah, he wants to go into those sticks. We'll see what the battle says here. It's this angle I don't like. For whatever reason, whenever he's on this side, he he's way harder. And when he turns that way, he's more passive. Come on, dog. <laughs> You don't need to get him wrapped in no. that. Oh, 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 over top of it. This is not good. Come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Stunning fish. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> now that is why we come to this creek. That is why we come to uh, these central Alberta springs. That's why in Chile, Argentina, New Zealand, whenever we're fortunate enough to fish, these are the creeks right here that we focus on. There's always one and it's that moment of magic and you just take it on. And when we walked up here today, that fish was cruising down, cruising, doing circles, and it was like, okay, he's feeding, and I could see it nymph, then it went kind of still resting because there's nothing, and then it nymphed, it was like, okay, I'm pitching it, I'm going for it, and it just came up, refused my nymph, and I was like, oh, you dog, swung around and faced me and ate, and I was like, oh, of course you're gonna do that, but yeah, just stunning fish, absolutely gorgeous big male. I just seen the way, oh, I seen him go again. Yeah. Kind of middle of the river there. Okay, nice. Because I'm in shade, I am up top now. Okay, I see him and he's slowly coming down your bank. Yeah, I got him. Okay. Up, right? Yeah, that's just it. He's gonna start to come into my glare a bit.
Okay. New, no, because if you, he's still going up, right? Yeah. I'm going to slowly get into this shaded bit right here. Yeah. Somewhere up in there. Yes, that's where it's going to be, and probably. Yeah, that pa. Yeah, there's kind of fluff or foam, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, somewhere up in there, Dave. Okay. My thing is, is honestly, the truth is, I don't really want the downstream take, yeah. and I'm going to wait till this fish cycles down, and turns around. Sorry. I'm I'm currently in a shaded bit, guys. So. Oh, my side. Thank you. I'm not moving. Funny thing is I may have no option but to get him on the down. You know? Yeah. It's a real it's a real interesting balance between when you want to wave your rod at all. Over to the right. Okay. Starting to come down. Low. Starting to come down. Okay, I'm I'm going. I'm in a good spot. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Yes. No, 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 no. No, he had you. He, but he touched it and didn't eat it. He ate it. Wow. But that mouth didn't open close. Didn't open and close. Really? Yep. Jeepers. You couldn't see that from here. He was charging so fast. Yep. Okay. Well, he was on that like it was nobody's business. <laughs> it was hard to keep up with him. Jeepers. Yeah, how did you? <laughs> well, guys, that's a drag, but that's all on me. I totally got caught watching the fish instead of actually watching my dry fly as an indicator. I was actually waiting for that fish's mouth to open and close, and that fish came in so hard and so fast on my nymph that it had eaten before, before I wanted to react at all. And the problem is, is I was actually looking again, and it, he was coming at me, and I never actually saw that mouth open close. Dave said, plain as day, but of course, my fault. Again, I did not watch my dry fly as the indicator. I needed to. Bugger! Oh, he's coming down my shot. Is he? Oh, yeah, okay. I've got that. I'm getting line out. I'm gonna go again. He's coming over. Got it. Oh, I set. It's okay, it's okay. He didn't overreact. Yeah, I set. Wow. Good try. I set. Yeah, wow. Good try. He's still up there. It's okay, let's let him settle. Okay. Let's sure. I definitely was watching my dry fly. <laughs> I can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Jeez. I gotcha. Yeah, he's he's right underneath the junction of the log, about three feet out. Um, yeah, about three feet out from that. So I'm actually going to have to go around this set of spruce and cast to where I know I I know the fish is, and hope he's still there when I get back into position. Jeepers. Okay. So it's a one shot deal here. It's a really nice fish. Have to get this out before I get there. Uh -huh. Okay. It's gonna it's gonna be a bow and arrow. Yeah. Um <laughs> 
shorten that up some more. Wow. Well, I don't know if he's still here. But I kind of have to go where I knew he was. That makes sense. Okay. So here goes nothing. Okay. Just going to get it out there, fired out there, short enough. Come on. That's lots of trouble. Lots of trouble. That's lots of trouble. Come on, fish. Come on. That's lots of lots and lots and lots and lots of trouble. Okay, that's a, that one's woo! <laughs> it was a really big fish, Mills. I knew it was when I was downstream looking at him. I could just tell by his girth. That's a sneaky one. <laughs> I'm all in on this guy. In case you didn't know. Come on. This is where I want to get that head on the surface. If I can get that head on the surface without him doing that. No, 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 no. Let him have one more run. Get that nail knot, loop knot, out of the rod. I think the anxiety with a size 16 nymph is that you just don't know. You know. If I can keep that head on the net on the water, I like this. Come on, head up on the water, head up, head up. Yes, oh, gorgeous wow. fish. Oh my god, what a gorgeous! Oh my, oh my god, fish. what a fish! Wow, what a fish! No, that's the stunner. No, that's a stunner. Um, so Fly Fisherman uh, Magazine a few years, a couple years ago, did a, you know, top 10 destinations of the world, whatever I think it was. Number one, home waters. <laughs> and this is home waters. Absolutely. You know, when I was walking up, um, I said, I got to get across the creek because the sun is out here and yeah, it's just blazing. And it's just a gorgeous day. And I look in where we saw this fish. A year ago and 10 days ago, didn't see it. I was like, okay, um, probably underneath this log up here. And I got across the creek. I literally got across the creek down here and I went into the, the line of wolf, wolf willow down there. And that log there, well, that down tree, just, I think maybe from where the tree hits the, the bank, it might've been in hindsight about two, two and a half feet off the bank under the back side of the tree which is why i had to walk through the through the willows and through the spruce to get there and i knew you know everything about a brown trout it's lateral line and vision all you have to do is go blink upstream of it make sure your approach is quiet it took me five minutes to get into position and just a little blink and bring it back let it sink bring it back uh foot and i just right from below me I, I bet you if i had my arm out like that that fish came out from the log from maybe another foot further and just came out and it was just that big kind of going away from me chomp i was like thank you and but the thing is when it went underneath that tree it was like uh oh it spooked out another fish that was there there's usually two or three nice fish sitting in this run here but that was the one I wanted. What a fish, gorgeous fish. Um, but home waters, you know, uh, we spent two and a half months in Chile. Uh, this year, uh, yeah, three years ago, I think we spent a month in Argentina. And of course, all through the years, we've spent so many years in New Zealand and obviously I've been fly fishing Alberta now for 45 years. Um, if you ask me an honest question, I would say, yeah, New Zealand has got my heart and my soul um, because I love that kind of fishing. 
but guess what I just finished doing here and this is home waters and through everything I've seen Alberta is is, is a number two it's actually not that far rem removed from New Zealand but uh, it's it's number two uh, then probably Argentina then Chile but home waters always rank up there and I've been fishing this little creek for 20-25 years and it never disappoints there's always something and if you got a home water that you love i know that you know what that feels like to just have that moment on your home stream when they happen it's just it's this right it's just you're buzzing and it, it, there's no better feeling in the world and what a stunning fish it's only what that one fish over three or four years that we caught here yeah exactly but i sure remember it i think i was going for this fish at the yeah. time you were filming and yeah, it was a it was a beautiful Big fish again. Tail. Big female. Yep, again a cruising fish. But way more weeds back then. Way more weeds. This is filled in a lot. There's you know quite a funny? bit of silt on the bottom. That's way before the 05 flood. It's 2022, and That's this used to crazy. be nothing but weed beds in this pocket. Yeah. And the Big River jumped, and everything washed. Yep, it there sure did. Weed bed since 17 years ago. That's right. And and this one actually hasn't fished well either. No. Um, that's just the truth of it. Like gotta be warm. there was way more, like you say, there was weeds and there was also rocks exposed. This is really covered yeah. up. But see the odd yeah. you know, chewed up beaver stick, but I like the swing wide on this one just because we're so exposed. Yes. Well, or the fish is so exposed. Something about this feels more promising just because of the amount of weeds on the bottom. But. A little depth. Yeah. A little more permanency to it all. That's right. We'll see. I know I've got them here one fish before here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of staying in the shade on this side of the yes. creek, eh? That's if right. Stay, if you stay in the shade over here, yeah. You're not exposed yeah. and you can be right, you know, a fish will cruise right along the shoreline and wouldn't see it. No. <laughs> Pretty much just like the only fish I've worked today. Yeah. You know, I was in my shady spot. He was a few times, maybe two rod lengths away from me, crystal clear water. I didn't move a muscle. It wasn't an issue. Which is still bizarre to me. Me too. To be honest with you. Never say never, today might be the first. Oh, well, we've just spotted one, guys. Right up as far as I'm pointing with my rod. Yeah. Way up just behind, it looks like somebody's little man-made bridge. bridge. Okay. So, guys, we've got a tough fish ahead of me. <laughs> this fish is holding in some seriously shallow water some seriously calm water. There's the odd time that the wind picks up and I get a little bit of chop. But the reality is, I think this fish, this fish might be holding in a foot of, of depth, maybe a little more, but the point is super clear and glass-like water. Um, my trouble is, if you can see ahead of me here, Dave's just trying to film him a little bit. And he's upstream of Dave. But the reality is, is, you know, if I try to go for this fish from this side, from this side, I kind of risk exposing myself because I'm, I've got height above this little braid of river of the Spring Creek here. And it's not the greatest back cast either. The trouble with going across over to that side and trying to get into position to cast to the fish is that I have a feeling I'm not gonna see the fish from that angle. The sun is pretty much right above me and I have a feeling that I'll be looking straight into the sun and I won't get to see where the fish is. And that's also a real disadvantage. So <laughs> I've, gotta, I've gotta decide what I'm gonna do here. Um, I haven't as yet. I wanna get up into the shade where Dave is now, get a good picture of where exactly this fish is holding. He seems to be so far a little further to that opposite bank from me, across from me. So yeah, I'm a little nervous. That's the truth of it. <laughs> I'd really like to have a go and be successful at this fish. So we'll see here. We've got the drone up. Dave's trying to get, pick up this fish <clears throat> on our long lens. And yeah, lots going on.
Well guys, I'm choosing to go across the river. Point is with all these fish today, I'm not gonna be able to go at the fish at all. I can't line it, I can't have anything get anywhere near it, so I'm gonna have to draw it out in the middle of the river. Three, or three feet to the right. Yeah, exactly, hey? Yeah. Oh, not, ooh, nice rise, eh? You are roll? What's that? It's rolling, that's a weird thing. Okay. No, you moved up a bit. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh no. On the water. It's on the water. got to roll on this because I believe there's got to be somebody in here. Yeah. Judging from what we've seen so far today, it'll probably be a 22 to 26 inch brown. Just as easily miss a fish as see a fish, though, with that glare. Which is funny because you almost want sun, but you don't. And this is where you also look through a fish because it's not as deep as you think, or because the light dynamics are off, what you think. I'm also looking underneath that floating mat of needles there. Just try to get in there and see what happens. <laughs> wow, this could take some time. Or was it the next pocket? The lighting is just terrible. I have to go around. I just don't feel comfortable, confident getting this close. I'd rather be through the trees a rod length back than a foot on offshore above the fish every day of the week. You know one's going to show pretty quick here. Jeepers. I don't want to expose myself at all, but make sure that reel doesn't flash while I go through here. Jeepers. Here's one. No, he's, he's moving pretty good. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. biggest boy is coming. That's why two of them. Okay, here we go. Come on. All I have to do is come up an inch, a foot and Got him. Yeah. that's the biggest boy. He's gone, 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 gone. 
Yep, I knew that was gonna be the case. Yeah, broke him off because I didn't want to lose him under that tree. No, he was, I think he's at least as big as that uh, big red tail I caught. Yeah, it was a big fish. That was a big fish. Ugh. Yeah, I saw the smaller one come scooting out. I was like, why is he moving? Well, he has to get me pushed by somebody. And that's exactly, I didn't want to be over here to be honest with you guys, exactly for this reason. Because when you're over there, you can cast and pull that way. Well, I knew this fish was gonna come up and I was like, I had to wait until he was in a place where I could try. But when they're six pounds, whatever the heck that thing, well, maybe maybe five to seven pounds, you don't have a chance at pulling. Once he once he got going underneath that that stick along shore here, it was like, oh no, he's got to come that way, and he didn't come that way. So I got spanked. Hey, what are you gonna do? Really gorgeous fish though. <laughs> Another huge headed male.